Coming to you live from the Cloud Foundry Summit in Santa Clara. I'm here with Julian Fisher. Julian, how are you? I'm good. Wonderful. Thanks to be here. Sure. So you are coming from Germany and you are the CEO of Any9s. Um, if people don't know about Any9s, what do you do? Well, we're actually a Cloud Foundry consultancy. Uh, we started as a public offering, which still exists on our past at Any9s.com. But we've transformed ourselves into a data service uh, company. So we're building data services uh, for Cloud Foundry now for a living and also doing operations and consulting around Cloud Foundry. And so you and I were talking just a second ago uh, and the industries, although you do, you work with any, you were talking about insurance and uh, manufacturing, was that it? Right. So a lot of the German industry uh, started to digital, digitally transform. So with Cloud Foundry being an obvious choice, uh, people are required to help those, uh, those companies to pick up uh, and build a platform strategy. So that's where we come to the game and help, um, help them building the knowledge. And so in Europe, uh, what would be some of the key, it's probably the same as it is worldwide, but are there any particular um, regulations that are driving digital transformation and these things that are particularly why you need to, to, to get and start transforming? I think that uh, it's, it's less a policy that uh, drives digital transformation but more the fear that uh, you'll be disrupted at some point and that uh, in the future digital products will create more value than uh, or that at least uh, the current existing products will not be enough anymore. Uh, Germany being a good uh, country for, for car manufacturers uh, have been shown by and demonstrated by Tesla that even with established uh, relationships, uh, disruption uh, is not something that won't happen to industries like that. So with that fear in mind, they have to do something. So adopting digital transformation in terms of creating more time to value is something they have to learn. And so that would make a lot of sense. It, uh, of course, it's a global market, and so you can't yeah. you can't hide from uh, developments elsewhere. So within Cloud Foundry, what what is the aspect or feature of it that that you find most interesting or helpful to your customers? Well, the Cloud Foundry runtime basically abstracts from uh, any application server concept of the past, so it reduces the heterogeneity in operations and hence the efforts on operating. Uh, a large number of applications. This facilitates uh, a trend towards modern, modern software development with respect to microservice architectures where naturally you will have more apps to be uh, operated. So this only works if, the, if operating a single app is less effort than it was in the past. And we found out that an essential and often underestimated part of it is data services which is the reason why we came up with a bunch of services that are based on Bosch. Uh, so we have a full lifecycle deployment so that those five services at the moment uh, can uh, basically turn your, production, your platform into a production grade platform. Cool, and so just to conclude with, for any nines, what are some of the things that, that you have uh, ahead of you that you're, you're most excited about or looking to, uh, to work on? It's data service, obviously, because um, a lot of customers, they pick up the Cloud Foundry runtime and they'll see that uh, deploying applications is easy, but keeping them up and running only works if your data service concept is uh, as production grade as the Cloud Foundry runtime. And that was a missing link for a large time. Uh, we experienced that when building pass99s.com and had to solve it. So. Our mission is to change the way data services are deployed, and we would like, and that is what we currently have, um, a bundle of any nine data services that basically are uh, what Cloud Foundry is for apps, just for data services. Very cool. Julian Fisher, thank you so much. You're welcome.